Hey friends, it's Amanda May with Art of Design. Welcome back to my channel. I got my twinkle lights on. I can't wait to talk about this week and show you my fun Halloween craft stuff. I'm making some handmade Halloween fun. I've got my twinkle lights on. It's never too early for twinkles. This is my 14th floss tube episode and I'm so thrilled that you came back to join me this week. As many of you know, I hope to be the thread that connects historic needlework to contemporary needle art. I'm congested. It is now sweater season and with sweater season here in the Mid-Atlantic also comes cold and flu season. And I definitely have a cold. I apologize in advance if I'm a bit nasally, but I hope that doesn't deter you from hanging out with me a little bit. I'm thrilled to be here. Today we're going to do our Save the Stitches. I'm going to show you my current works in progress. We're going to dive right into Save the Stitches. I don't know if you can see behind me here. This is one of my pieces that I saved about six years ago before I had ever learned or fully appreciated embroidery and contemporary needle art. I bought this piece because quite frankly it's gorgeous and whimsical. I really like whimsical nature scenes. I like fairies and gnomes and all the cutie things. So when I saw this piece, it had to come home with me. I don't know if you can see, it's got French knots and specialty stitches. It's a curl embroidery and there's some cute little scenes. So I've had this up on my wall for the last five years and I love it. I would love to do some more forest scenes. When I'm, I have, well, the, the trees of the world, all the different beautiful trees in every continent or every country. And I think it would be really cool to do like a tree sampler. And then I heard that someone already did a tree sampler. So I want to investigate about stitching a tree sampler. I grew up in the Redwood Forest of California. So the Redwoods are my absolute favorite, favorite tree. <laughs> and I think my favorite tree in the winter time here in the mid-Atlantic states is the blue spruce tree. I, I love seeing them and when the snow is fall, fallen and it's like gently on a blue spruce tree and then you see the red cardinal on that blue spruce, it's the most beautiful thing. I love trees. This is my one of my Save the Stitches again. I want to show you some other really neat little things that I've had in my collection for the last several years. These are not these are not new acquisitions. These are uh, goodies that I've had in my stash that I really wanted to show you. I love tea towels. I actually have a 2019 tea towel coming from Phoebe Wall. Her, uh, and I'm so excited about it. So I have this tea towel. It's from 1976, the Bicentennial. The reason I have never used this linen is look at that original tag on it. All pure linen, Parisian prints. Nothing dries like linen, made in the United States. Found this to be a really awesome piece of American history. We've got linen, so we've got textile art. We've got the bicentennial. We've got kind of that really awesome, the mid-century modern colors as many of you know already now that that's really part of my color palette mid-century modern and it's got that it's also got that kind of traditional sampler look I also have and I thought these are so funny who would actually use these they're so cute and dainty I wouldn't want to put my wet hands on them but I got them and I displayed them for a while in one of my bathrooms, but I was actually genuinely afraid that someone was going to use them. So I took them down. 
put their embroidered his and hers cute little towels. I have this piece and it's so gorgeous and I it looks like the center is a scrap of fabric I, I know it's not but it, it looks that way anyway this is one of my favorite doilies that I've ever acquired and it's got a really pretty kind of uh, pinkish hue to it but what I really love about it is the non-traditional center my next piece is really lovely it's a tablecloth and it has matching uh, napkins <laughs> and again I got this uh, piece years and years ago and I, I just absolutely love it so I'm gonna show the napkins first I'm not sure if this was a kit or if this came fully assembled but it's got the lanterns with the specialty stitching with the beautiful edge work and it came with four different napkins and then the small tablecloth. I just find it to be such a dream. I absolutely love it. The corner work, it has the lanterns and the stitching. And my last sea of the stitches is an apron. I, I love aprons. And what's special about this one, I've never actually used it, but what I like about it is the engineering that it's an apron and a dish towel built in and it's something that I would like to replicate and make one in the future. It's again the mid-century which I love. I love the color palette. I don't know if many of you know that about me. Uh, I have, excuse me as I bend over, I think one of my favorite Edvar colors besides their fragrant cloves is Gentle Arts, uh, well the geranium and no um, my favorite, favorite one, as you can see, I have the least of here, is the hibiscus. It's my absolute favorite fancy floss. And look, see that color palette there? Absolutely adore it. I love that it has the built-in dish cloth, so when you're wa after washing your dishes, you can pat dry. But it also has the reversible where you can have your little pockets and stuff. So I just found this to be absolutely charming. And I again, in all my free time, I would love to replicate this apron. All right, that's my Save the Stitches this week. And we're gonna move on to my Halloween project. My work in progress this week is Halloween costumes. One of my kids, said they want to be a purple monster for Halloween. The dollar store, <laughs> we bought so many googly eyes. My husband goes, well, what are you going to do, Amanda? And I said, I have a plan. I have a plan. <laughs> The next day, and I found in the fabric remnant section of one of the craft stores, I ended up finding purple fabric in the remnant section. And I score, so I had googly eyes. I had the pool noodles. I had the purple fabric and the purple pants. So we're ready to go. We're ready to rock and roll. So we got started making the costume. So we are on the purple monster crafting parade. My hot glue gun that has served me well for the last decade died <laughs> so I ended up getting a brand new glue gun and we got to work the googly eyes and these eyes with the purple were from the dollar store the rhinestones were from another craft store and then this gold fabric this fabric is a like a dance fabric, a dance lycra. I'd gotten it several months ago, also in the fabric remnant section. <laughs> <laughs> and 
when I got it, one of my sewing groups, I asked, how do I sew with this? I've never sewn. And my husband goes, what are you going to do with it? You're never going to use that fabric. And I said, ah, challenge accepted. <laughs> so I cut out and I hot glued. And then the kids used the tacky glue to put all the googly eyes on. And then I've got like a yard and a half of this, by the way. I'm so excited. I make all the things. I made a collar, as you can see in the background here. And I affixed it with hot glue with all the pool noodles for the eyes. I used the dog collar as a template to trace out the collars for the kids' costumes. They say, ah, it doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be done, right? This definitely looks handmade. I am not trying to win any costume contest awards. I'm just making a costume with my kids. They're having fun, I'm having fun. And at the end of the day, it looks handmade. And that's okay, and that's great. I'm not, again, I'm not a professional seamstress. And anywho, so here's the, here's one of the collars that has not been glued yet. And fun, fun fact, I'm probably gonna use the same dog collar thing as a template to make a tree skirt for one of my Christmas trees that I'm doing this year. Anywho, I sewed on, I used just the fun little specialty stitch Yes, I did not change thread colors because I just didn't. I wanted to look, I wanted it to have that whimsical look. So I stitched that and then the kid wanted the green. So we did the green and then the clips I used were uh, for cloth diapering. I have the special clip. Um, anyway, because I cloth diapered because I needed more hobbies and activities. <laughs> I needed more laundry to do. <laughs> I had the cloth diapering snaps so I can snap it here. And the cool thing now is uh, I'm just putting it on and on the kids it doesn't, it's not this tight obviously and it looks really cool rounded. We got, I, I converted a couple of shirts I actually cut them down the t-shirts and like braided them underneath and then they're gonna have we're gonna hot glue the eyes on this I'm really excited <laughs> and then the hat piece I made and it's got more googles more googly eyes and I think we're well on our way to having a really awesome little purple monster dollar store stuff. I, the most expensive thing was I had to replace my hot glue gun, but pool noodles. I, I have so many pool noodles, y'all. I ship using pool noodles for frames and stuff, and that's another video I'll have to show you how to ship securely using pool noodles. <laughs> anyway, I have pool noodles, remnant fabric, secondhand store purple, pants, and we're well on our way to having a very handmade costume. My completed item for this week is a carriage house samplings, small little piece. Let me grab it. I'm really happy with it. This is the pattern, love. This came out in 2006 and because I had to be difficult, I changed all the colors and I love it. I haven't ironed it, excuse me. But here we go. And I did not add the stitching in the back here. I did add one over one, I added a little heart. And again, I changed all the colors and I added back stitching on the windows to add it to make it look more whimsical. And I used my Banana Pants Purdy color palette for the stitching because 
what can I say? It's like my favorite color palette right now. That's Victorian Motto Sampler Shades of Violet. The Gentle Arts Hibiscus. Victorian Motto. It's um, the 1950s Aqua. A Variegated DMC. The 4140 Geranium. Blackbird Crescent Colors. And then, of course, Banana Pants Yellow and Purdy Orange. Again, my favorite, it's my my color palette right now. I'm I'm really excited. I'm designing a couple of other things using the same color palette. I'm really excited about it. And I guess that's one thing I wanted to talk about too really fast is, I don't know if you can see this little painting behind me right here. It's of a, uh, it's on wood. And the artist, she was actually a blogger about a decade ago that I followed. She had posted a giveaway, and I had never entered a giveaway. And she said, post your favorite quote, and I'll randomly draw. I posted the quote that I have lived my life by for, I would say, the last 20 years, if not longer. And it's you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. Apparently, Wayne Gretzky said it. I, I remember seeing it in my high school on, you know, the motivational posters that they have up. And it was Michael Jordan going to take a basket, like a, a dunk shot, and it said, you, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. That's pretty much how I have tried to live my life and it's it, it can be scary and I don't always have the answers but it's okay to put yourself out there and, and take a chance a lot of the time most of the time the worst that can happen is someone says no <laughs> so I have uh, been sending some of my designs out for consideration in some publishing st stuff and that's all I'll say about that the worst that can happen is someone tells me no and then I try again right I am grateful that we live in a time where we're connected our, the whole world, literally the whole world is connected. I mean, isn't there Wi-Fi in Antarctica? I mean, sometimes I can't get <laughs> a signal with my cell phone carrier here in Maryland. But you know what I mean. We're, we're all connected. And we all want to spread joy and be loved and feel love and again what the worst that someone could tell me is no so that's what I'm doing with my banana pants purdy pattern color palette I'm designing some more things make all the things <laughs> oh I wanted to show you a really cool calendar that I have it's from 1988 and it has the insert with the directions, the year in samplers, 1988 workbook with all the patterns. But this is a time of year where calendars are coming out. Like I said, I have one on order, uh, a tea towel calendar. And every year we put up in our home, we have a sloth calendar. <laughs> every year we do a different sloth calendar. So I have that coming. No, no, I have the sloth calendar, excuse me. I have my tea towel calendar coming and I really love the significance of calendars and so I have this one and it's got the picture and look at this of all these really amazing samplers and what I love is that it came with a pattern book that I could stitch them again I have learned in this last year thanks to floss tube thanks to Instagram, the significance, importance, and beauty of samplers. And I would like to thank all of you 
for showing me that. So when I saw this calendar, I didn't get it for the dates, you know, 1988. I got it for the gorgeous sampler showcasing. And again, the corresponding pattern booklet. I think this is really awesome. Look at that. I love it. It's got the trees, the reindeer. I want to thank all of you again for joining me this week. I apologize for being under the weather, but I'm so grateful to be here. We, uh, the giveaway, banana pants, pretty pattern, the floss, and the little, I announced my giveaway last week for this. We're going to carry the giveaway for one more week. And the question for this week is, what is your favorite floss color? Like I said, my favorite pink is Gentle Arts Hibiscus. And I just, I love all the colors. The brighter, the better. I want to know what your favorite color is. If you entered the giveaway last week, that's great. You can enter it again, so you can have your name in twice for Floss Tube 13 and then Floss Tube 14 for this episode down below. What's your favorite floss color? And we're going to do the, the drawing next week. And I look forward to reading all of your answers, and I wish you the best for this week. Uh, I appreciate you coming back, and... I hope that you have a, a beautiful week of stitching and uh, drink those hot beverages. And stay safe, stay well, and I hope you don't I hope you don't get the crud like me. <laughs> and talk soon. Oh, oh. I would love it if you would follow me on uh, YouTube, Pinterest, Facebook. All my details will be below if you want to message me. Um and in the giveaway, please don't say giveaway. Just tell me what your favorite floss color is. And if you have any questions, again, please feel free to ask them down below. I love reading and talking to all of you. And I hope you have a great week. Take care.